In this video, I'm gonna be showing you some techniques on how to draw support and resistance correctly and actually how not to draw it. Because if you draw it incorrectly and use the information around it incorrectly, it can do a lot of damage. And don't forget, you can also use the links below to pick up a live trade example that I showed you using the information I'm about to show you in this video. So let's get started. Alright, good morning everybody, good evening, good afternoon. How's everyone doing? Can you guys all hear me and see me just fine? I hope the audio is okay. So if the audio is too high or too low, please let me know. Alright, 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 we'll give it another 30 seconds and we'll get started. We've got 714 people in here and counting. Uh, once we hit the maximum of 1,000, it's going to get locked in. Uh, some people might be still be able to get in, but the chat won't work properly. All right, all right. Good to see everybody. Where is everybody from? Where is everyone from? Let's see where everyone is here from. Okay, I saw someone said New York earlier. So welcome, welcome. Um, yes, so the webinar is recorded. The webinar is recorded. Okay, here we go. Uh, India, Singapore, London, Sri Lanka, South Africa, Australia, Kenya, Sweden, Vietnam, Morocco, Kerala, Chennai, Portugal, Ghana, whoa, Azerbaijan, uh, Turkey, Greece, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Singapore, London, Maldives. <laughs> okay, I can't keep up anymore now. I saw Pakistan in there. I saw Jupiter in there. <laughs> Uh, Odisha, uh, Johannesburg. Okay, welcome guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to have all of us in here. It is a global community that we have here at Urban Forex. A lot of you guys are here from all around the world. I, you know, I wanna start off by saying thank you for taking the time to be here. As always, it is a pleasure for me to have you guys here as well. Now, this webinar, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna spend an hour together going over some support and resistance uh, discussions with you guys. Um, and before I begin, I just want to find out from you guys how many of you guys, it, if this is your first time here, okay? Is this your first time here? All right, seems like um, a lot of you guys are returning members, so welcome back, welcome back. And for those of you who are new, welcome as well. Maybe you've seen the recordings or anything like that, but it's the probably the first time you've been in a live webinar with me. So uh, welcome, welcome. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Naveen Prithiani. I'm the senior trader at forexwatchers.com. I am the mentor over at urbanforex.com and the CEO of Black Tower Investments uh, Limited. So it's great to have all of you guys here. And today's important question is, can you actually use support and resistance year after year? And the answer is yes. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay, so we're going to talk about the things about uh, support and resistance today because I still get a lot of emails with people saying that there are some issues they're having with support and resistance. They're having trouble drawing support and resistance. How do I exactly draw it, Naveen? Is it at the tails? Is it at the bodies? Uh, is this really a support and resistance? Is this really a support and resistance? You know, so all of these little questions are coming up with a lot of the people saying, I'm very confused. I'm not sure what the real answer is. So let's figure that out today. Let's get you those perfect answers today and find out uh, what you need to know. So the webinar is gonna be recorded. The whole webinar is recorded. As we're gonna go into the whole education piece, I'm going to turn off the chat so you guys can all focus on what we're discussing. We're gonna open up the chat towards the end. We're gonna be just discussing pure Q&A at that time. And also at the end of the webinar, uh, once you get the recording, I'll also get you guys some example sets. So I'm gonna get you guys, whatever you learn here in this webinar, you're also gonna be able to practice them in the example sets. So you'll get that as well. So not to worry, anything you learn today, you can apply today onwards, okay? Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll go with theory, then we'll go with practical, and we'll show you on the charts as well, okay? So there we go. Um, and one final thing, just wanted to check, what is the level of your education in here? What is your level of education in here? So here we go, if you guys can get that to me. 
Okay, if you do not have any of these, please do not answer it, but I just want to know uh, what, what people we have in this room. Okay, so these are all the courses we have over at urbanforex.com, and this helps me gauge the audience level of knowledge uh, that's in the room. Okay, so looks like there is uh, at least half of you guys in the Mastering Price Action course, 36% uh, of you guys are in the four course bundle, and 16% of you guys are already in the elite community. So we got the top dogs in here too, 16% top dogs in here. And then we got the other ones getting ready to become uh, pro traders. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. All right, so turning off the chat, turning off the chat, here we go. Here we go, let me go into settings and chat is now off. Okay, all right. So now the, the most, most important thing right now is support and resistance. The, the question about support and resistance, I'm gonna ask you guys, many of you guys, when you look at support and resistance, the common thing that comes up is what is support and resistance, okay? Uh, the reason why support and resistance if I ask any of you guys, there's like 915 people in this room right now. There's not one person, not one person that will say, I don't know what is support and resistance. Every one of you guys know support and resistance. But I'm gonna ask you this question again at the end of the webinar. Do you really know support and resistance? So that's why I'm gonna go through all the techniques that you need to know about the most basic topic but the most basic thing is always the most misunderstood thing. You'll be surprised to see how many people don't know uh, what is, you know, what people call common sense, right? Because, you know, the saying is that common sense is not the most common practice, okay? And just because you know about it doesn't mean you know how to use it, okay? So we'll go over that, and if there is any holes, you'll be able to fix it. If you've already fixed it, it'll add on to your uh, recap for your knowledge. So let's get into this. Let me open up my screen sharing here. So now when we're dealing with support and resistance, right? I'm gonna put this here, SNR. There's a couple of things about support and resistance that we need to keep track of, okay? Support and re SNR means support and resistance, which is a very common term. Everyone's like, I, I, I know the word, Naveen. Come on, like, wh what are we talking about here? I know the word. So let's discuss this a little bit deeper. Why is support and resistance so important, okay? Is it just something we're looking for something like this to happen and saying, hey, I can see that support and then later it becomes resistance. That means sell here. Is that what support and resistance means? Okay, or is it, I know that there's something here, so as prices goes up to here, I will expect a bounce from this area and when it bounces, okay, now I sell. Is it a trigger for you to get in? Or is it some information that's just telling you hey, there might be a wall here. But now, is that really a support and resistance? What if the chart looked something like this? Let me clean this up for you. What if the chart looked like this? Okay, what about now? Is that support resistance? Is this support and resistance? Is that support resistance? Is that support and resistance? Well, which one is it? Is it all of them? Is it some of them? Is it none of them? Okay, this, when I ask this question to any of the students that I encounter, I'll have all kinds of lines on the chart. By the time they're done drawing it, it, it looks like uh, someone took a knife, like a samurai knife, and just sliced the chart up left and right. You know, it just looks like lines all over the place. Okay, well, what do you do with that information? What does that even mean? How do you actually understand what this does, right? Okay, so let's get into that uh, nitty gritty bit, nitty gritty today. So a couple of things. Support and resistance are two things, okay? The two things, the first thing is consider it like a wall, okay? We talked about this in uh, multiple webinars before. It is like a wall, and the second thing that makes support and resistance very important is memory, okay? And we'll discuss the two things uh, quickly here. Now, prices can go in a certain direction, hold, turn around and then rise again, okay? This will act as resistance right here. And once it breaks it, it can act as support, right? You know, some basic knowledge. So anything that is above you is called resistance, okay? Anything above the price, anything that is below the price is support, right? 
imagine like a couple of hands uh, holding the bottom, like support, right? Okay. Okay, so that's support right there. Okay, not the best drawing, but you get the idea. So that support is always on the bottom and on top is resistance. Now, to go further into this, to go further into this, I want you to understand one thing. If the price is going up to a certain level like this and it stops and then it does this and then it does that, people automatically assume because it stopped and there was a few red bars in there or a few red candles in there, this automatically becomes resistance is now becoming support. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. If you want to just simply draw lines anywhere, I will give you a coloring book, okay? You don't want to just draw lines anywhere, okay? You want to think why. Why should this be a line, okay? So let's get into the why. Let's get into the why. Why do we need to draw a line there? And then later we'll get into how does that help us, okay? We keep hearing support and resistance all over the internet, but we don't know what's the purpose of it. Why are we doing this? Just because everyone says you know we're supposed to do it, so we do it? What is this, a religion, right? So let's take a look at it very carefully here. Uh, how can I erase? Can I erase this thing? We'll just keep it, it's fine. All right, when, when the prices are going in a certain direction, you're looking for how much of a reaction does it have compared to the move it did. Let me repeat that. Compared to the move it was doing, how much of a reaction did it have to it? That means this price is important, okay? This price is important. It stopped the market from going full speed. And when it stopped it, how long did it stop? Okay, did it stop for one candle and take off again? Don't draw your line there, it's useless. But did it hold the market for quite some time? And then after a decent retracement, it then blasted up north very, very hard. So a couple of things you wanna always know about support and resistance uh, is you need few things to happen. You need a, a retracement that comes in quite deep from a level, that's good. You need to know how much of a pullback did you have based on the original move that was going up so you know if it's really important, what kind of wall is right here? And once that wall holds, later on when that wall gets broken by someone extremely strong, that's why that wall now becomes support. And when prices come back down here, it tries to use that area as support and he tries to maintain that balance, okay? Now, let's get into the part of memory. How does this play into memory? Why is this all important? Okay, why is this all important? What are we doing with all of this? All right, uh, let me see if I can uh, refresh this page. One second. Perfect. Okay, so now we go into memory. Okay, and then I'll show you these things on a chart in a little bit. I just want you to guys to get this theory out of the way so you guys know this information. This is actually more important before we even get, get into the chart. How many of you guys here, okay, let me, let me look in, into the chat here one second. How many of you guys here have this complication of the moment you learn something without even understanding it or practicing it, you're in it. You're like, okay, let me just try it on the markets right now. Let me try it on the markets right now. You never develop the training. You never develop the training. It's just, I got this information. It was on YouTube. It was on a PDF. It was on uh, you know some book for dummies or something like that. Well, now I need to make money immediately. Let me just go home and apply it right now, right now, right now, right now. But if you keep doing it right now, right now, the moment you activate your trade, you never get a chance to learn. Does this how it's supposed to work? Is that what it's really doing? Is that the real purpose of this? And when it fails, what happens? I got the idea of support and resistance. Uh, okay, what's the next chapter? What do we do next? Next, next, come on. I gotta make money quick. People are waiting. Calm down, calm down, slow it down. And this is the reason why most people miss support and resistance 
which is very, 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 very important. Okay. I don't know how many varies I said, but that's a lot of varies. Okay. You need to remember that. Okay. So let's go, let's go back to the, um, let's go back to the screen sharing. Let me show it to you here. I turn off the chat again. All right. Now, now when it comes to memory, okay, it plays a big role. Memory is support and resistance. Memory is support and resistance. Never forget that. Never forget that. Okay. Um, so what does that mean for us? If prices, okay, so let's say you're trying to buy a car. This box car from 1960, you're trying to buy this car, right? All right, beautiful car. In today's world, it would be called a Ferrari, but back then it was a Ferrari, okay? So you're trying to buy this car right here. And now the car is priced at this price right now, starting price, starting price, $1,000. Okay, very nice, uh, cost-effective car. Prices start to rise, boom, $2,000. They rise further, $3,000. They rise further, $4,000. They rise further, $5,000. Prices have now reached $5,000. From that $5,000, prices go for a small discount at $4,900. $4,900, and then from there, it goes again. Do you think anyone in their insane mind is going to be like, did you see that discount? You know, we're, we're going to keep track of that because that is awesome. No, that memory is not going to hold. What holds is something drastic. Okay, let me show you. So if price went from 5000 and then suddenly price did this, and price reached around $3,000, what happens to the people who are watching this? At the rate of 5,000, they're already, their eyeballs are popping. They're like, oh my God, do you see that price? $5,000 for a thousand dollar car? Holy moly. And then when that price drops at, at 3,000, they're like, wow, look at that discount. Wow. As prices rise up, Okay, now this becomes resistance because this is important now. It did a drastic move in terms of how much based on the original move did it come down in percentage. Yes, that is a valid resistance now. People remember that $5,000 mark. Why? Because when it goes up again and it goes up, it's 4,000, 4,500, 4,700, $5,000, people are buying all of this, 3,000, 4,000, 4,500, 4,700, but when it reaches seven, uh, when it reaches 5,000, their memory kicks in and says, wait a minute, remember last time when it was at 5,000, prices dropped to $3,000, why would I buy it at $5,000? Maybe if I wait, I will get the price back down at $3,000 and I can buy it here, please, please, please that memory kicks in. Now, do you understand why support and resistance goes very close to memory? It is not just a line in the sky. It's not a coloring book, okay? It comes with a reason, a purpose. That memory sticks to them. But if at that memory, prices do this, 5,200, 5,500, 5,700, that memory is not shocking enough. So support will not become resistance, will not, sorry, resistance will not become support. Let me explain to you why. Let me remove this again. Now, if prices from the $5,000 mark do this, boom, and it reaches 8,000, what's gonna happen is the memory of this area where people were thinking maybe price will go back down again, and give me the $3,000 mark again, it was an area of panic, confusion, and frustration. That is what makes this area reactivate the memory and saying, do not forget this level. These guys are nuts. This car is now $8,000, and when it starts to pull back, they're not thinking the $3,000 mark anymore. They're thinking, you know what, if it gets close to 5,000, I'm gonna start buying it again. I think that's the lowest price I'm gonna get. 
Now do you understand why the whole world is trying to activate trades around support and resistance? But they'll be drawing support and resistance all over the place. So some work fantastically to the pip, some don't even work at all because they're missing the logic of why am I even drawing support and resistance? What is the purpose? If you don't answer the why, you will cry, okay? If you don't answer the why, if it's unknown, then you will cry. Always, in any walk of life, name it, is it education, is it religion, if it's logic, if you don't know the why, you will cry. It will bug you and it won't give you results, okay? Whatever it may be. Making sense? I just gave you guys chat access again. I wanted you guys to really look into this. We got over a thousand people in here now. Uh, so I, I, I apologize for those of you who cannot get in now. Uh, and those of you who are 26 over the thousand, I'm sure your chat is probably buggy also. Good, good. So it looks like a lot of you guys are catching on to this. Now, this information, as basic as it is, it's the most misunderstood thing on in the Forex market the most misunderstood thing in the Forex market, okay? Everyone just assumes, oh, support and resistance, a line. Who doesn't know how to draw a line? My dog can draw a line. My cat can draw a line. My cow can draw a line, right? So I know how to draw a line. Let's move on to the next subject. No, 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 no. You need to know support and resistance because support and resistance is the basis of how the market actually moves because there's human psychology on each line. There's human psychology on each line. Does that make sense? So you cannot ignore it. You cannot just jump past that topic and saying, okay, next step, let's go to some more advanced topics and uh, we'll become pro traders. No, no, it, it can't happen if you don't understand this part. Yeah, all right, so now let's get back into, um, let's look at some of the charts and I'm gonna explain some of these things to you in the practical sense. So now you've understood a little bit of theory. At this moment, any of you guys confused? Any any questions leading up until this moment of, hey, I didn't understand something, can you re-explain or anything like that? Maybe I can explain it in a different way, okay? Anything that did not make sense till now? If you're good, let me know you're good. And then we'll go into the charts now, and I wanna show you the next half of the hour on uh, uh, how you can use this information on a chart and what it actually looks like, okay? Enough of my Picasso drawing, right? <laughs> All right, okay, good, 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 good. Some of you guys are saying turn off the chat. Okay, looks like uh, turning off the chat works. Okay, good, good. Uh, okay, 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 good, good. Let's go into, let's turn off the chat and let's get back into business here. All right, boom, okay, here we go. All right, now, here we're looking at a chart, okay? We're on um, any, you can choose any chart you want, that's fine. We're looking at US dollar CAD on the 15 minute chart, okay? Any, any chart doesn't matter, any time frame doesn't matter. What matters is the, the, the nature of messiness, the, the part where people freak out. That's what makes a difference, okay? And if you have to, always think you're trying to buy something. Always think in that sense. So. If you have to draw that car, that weird car that I had and saying, this is where the price of that car started, okay? And as that price went up very, very aggressively and it stopped here, how long did it stop? How much did it pull back? This is gonna make people, for, first of all, this strong move up is a, is a cause of alarm, okay? And I can ask this question openly, how many of you guys, when you see large green candles like that or large red candles like this, you get this itch of, oh my God, I must do something, okay? I must do something because it's going so fast, it, it's riling up my emotions, I must do something, okay? So it's, it's always a cause for alarm or panic, these big moves. But when that panic stops and then it pulls back, people get a sense of maybe it will pull back again. Maybe it will pull back again. So when price gets up to this same resistance right here, look at that, I'm gonna draw a line straight across, okay? Price it reaches up to that resistance, people start thinking, look at that bounce, is it gonna go back down? 
oh, come on, it's got to go back down. Now, but when it goes above this line, how strong did it go above this line? Is it very, very aggressive? No. That's why this level is not so effective. It's not panicky when he went above this level. If he went above this level very strong, we would say this resistance now becomes support, period. You will follow that support resistance. But it wasn't that strong when it went up. It went up slowly. So no cause of alarm, no cause of panic. So people don't care for this area anymore. This is the single biggest mistake being made by anyone who's trading support and resistance. They forget the illusion of why is there a line. They just like to connect dots. Okay, here's a line from the upside and here's a line from the downside. I was trained to do this in preschool. Connect the dots. I learned this before, <laughs> right? So you want to be careful of this kind of stuff. You don't want to get pulled into that trap of just drawing a line anywhere and everywhere. Yeah? Okay. Now, let's take a look at this uh, uh, in terms of the next phase now. So up until this point, you guys understand. Now, let's ask the question of, well, do I draw my line here at the top of this thing? Or do I draw my line at the body like that? Because some uh, education says I got to draw it at the body. Or do I draw my line at the point where I can connect as many dots as possible? The answer is it's this area. It's this area. The reason being, the reason being this is your area is because the price on my chart can be here. The price on your chart can be here. The price on a different broker can be here. Okay, in Forex, price is not set by the exchange. There is no exchange. That means my price is different from your price. So if I say put a line at this exact price, it might not work for you. Okay, so you got to use that little zone, that area, thereabouts. Okay, you can never be strict and saying, you know, I'm going to draw my line perfectly. And by God, if it touches that line, I will buy my whole house and car and everything. I'll sell it and I'll just put it on the buy. No, don't do that. Okay. All right. Now, let's look at the flip side of the situation. Okay. Now, big panic on this. So you can see the market was stopping here. Market was stopping here. And then the whole thing comes crashing down. Now, does it crash down from here? No. It's not there that matters. What it happens, it crashes down from here. The more panicky, the better the design. It needs to be panicky. Now, if you've seen some of my older webinars, you'll know that I like a support and resistance that has a emotional candle separating it. Okay, an emotional candle separating it because this emotional candle causes the panic in the market and people are like, oh my God, look at that discount. That $8,000 car is now $1,000. Okay, fantastic. So if it's $8,000 car is now $1,000, keep that in mind. The memory is now activated. Okay, once the memory is activated and there's a line here, there's a line in the sky saying, okay, we got this area. Prices go up, 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 struggles, 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 struggles highest point, and then crashes. It's like, huh, okay, prices are not going up to 8,000 anymore. They went up to 7,000 and it crashed, okay? Prices went up to seven. I'm just making these numbers up uh, so you can have an idea. I'm not gonna use these numbers, it's too confusing, but I'm using just general numbers. Prices went up to that price and crashed, but how much? How much did it crash? Not too much. We didn't get the $1,000 price anymore. Oh, that's not good. But when prices start to go back up, how strong does it go up? Is it going up very, very aggressively? If we draw a line there, that's not too aggressive. If we draw a line here, that's not too aggressive. If we draw a line there, huh, that can be a little bit aggressive. But none of these are aggressive enough to be like, hey, man, I think we should start uh, uh, getting ready to sell this because prices you know, every time they get up to this area, they drop, they drop hard, then memory kicks in, right? But how much did they drop? If it drops very low and very less, then that level is not important. It's not important, okay? So 
In this case, we have a level up here and we have a level down here. Now, many of you guys have experience also looking at ranges. Now, what do ranges do? They play ping pong machine, right? They go boing, 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 very, very fast because the distance of the shock is so high and how fast it goes up and down, both of these levels become important support and resistance levels. Because of the speed, it goes up and down. And that's why when a price breaks out very aggressively, the world is looking at it like, oh my God, did you see that? Give me a pullback or something that holds above it and I'm gonna buy it because the memory kicks in. The memory kicks in. This is how the turtle traders, I don't know if you guys have heard of them, they're doing this kind of stuff. This is how breakout traders trade also. This is a whole strategy around breakout trading. But why learn a strategy if you don't know why it happens? Okay, you can learn all the strategies you want, but you need to know why it happens because then next time around when you see a strategy saying breakout strategy, you will know that when you have a range, a simple answer like this, oh, he's going outside the range, oh, he's going outside the range, oh, he's going outside the range, that's not a breakout. That's not enough panic in the market. So it won't hold. It won't work. You can't buy that. Okay? So now, although they're both breakout strategies, one will work and one doesn't. Weird, isn't it? Same strategy. And they're, they're all saying, yeah, we came out of the range, but one works, one doesn't. It is that element of, do you know why it should work? Okay, does that make sense so far? So far, so good. Just making making sense here. Sorry, just getting some water. But yeah, does does this make sense for a lot a lot of you guys? Yeah. Okay, so you can have any strategy uh, that you're working with, but you need to know the why. Yeah, you need to know the why. That's why you'll have certain strategies that work so well, so perfectly, and then at times you're like. What the H? Why isn't it working? You know, wh why isn't it perfect this time? Why was it perfect last time? You need that panic. You need that panic in there. Okay. Uh, one guy, uh, Jaya Rama saying, yes, uh, please explain that in detail. Okay, let, let's do this. Let's go back into the charts and I'm gonna, we're gonna do some more examples together and we'll talk it through so you guys can see the logic, the thought process that goes into that design, okay? We'll go into that. Well, let's, let's do that right now. That will be, instead of me explaining it theoretically, let's go look at a chart again. Okay, so, sorry, let me get rid of this. So the memory is activated in two spots, okay? The first spot we said was here, where the aggression came down very, very hard, and the other main spot is here, okay? Either here or, or that range, right? Thereabouts, okay? We can say that whole area, okay? But this, not so important because he goes down slowly, like inch and inch and inch and inch. Okay. When it touches this resistance, goes down aggressively, but then inch and inch and inch and inch. But this area that was going down inch and inch, people are thinking, huh, maybe again. The reason why maybe again is because this entire distance got stopped by this much. So maybe, this wall is strong, maybe. What happens to this wall when it reaches here? People are thinking, oh yeah, look at that red candle. That wall is gonna hold again. Range traders, hit the cell, let's party. But what happens with that? It doesn't hold, and how does it not hold? It blasts up north very aggressively. That blast up north is panic. Now that panic means, wait a minute, this support and this resistance now becomes support. And this area is going to do wonders for you. It will hold for the most part. It will, it should hold because the memory has now kicked in. Okay, the memory has now kicked in. So I, I hope whoever had that question, sorry, um, I hope this answers that question by seeing it like on a chart like this. This will help answer that question. Now, same thing again, it reaches up into this area as it jumps up this area that was supposed to hold gets breached by a little bit and it crashes. It crashes down this deep. Now this makes it thinking like, huh, I bet this area and this area 
has importance now. Okay, has importance now because the markets keep crashing here. It goes up slowly, 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 bounces again, but jumps right back up. Not panicky enough. Goes up, goes up, goes up, bounces up again, and then crashes down, crashes down. This becomes important. But remember this original line that you were drawing where there's emotions going up and down from this area? That level, again, crashes down hard from that area. That level can continue. That level can continue on to the other side. That memory will hold. That memory will hold. So you always want to use your area of support and resistance to use it in terms of memory. So here's a quiz for you guys. Here's a quiz. Is this an area of support and resistance? If you say no, that is correct. Is this an area of support and resistance? If you said yes, that is correct. It stops here. The distance it goes down, very strong. Then it goes through it aggressively. Okay, not so aggressive, but it goes in aggressively and holds again and goes up one more time. And then when it crashes down, it crashes down through it very hard. This is a level. This is a level. Okay, this is a level. So if, if you said yes to this level, very good. What about this area? Okay, up until this point, if you're saying that is support, that is incorrect. But if you later on as the market unfolds and then you say this is support, you can say yes to that because of the aggression that follows from this price later on. Later, you can say yes. At this point, it's hard to say if this is strong. That's not enough panicky moves. There's nothing there. Right? So it's not support at that stage. It is only support the moment this thing kicks in. And then it's like, okay, this support is now real. Okay? So let's draw this support. Let's extend it out. This support that got real, this area, right? Thereabouts, you want to take the tail, you want to take the body, and saying, okay, thereabouts, in case Bob has a different price than Charlie and has a different price than Sally, you know, prices change, and let's go further down. Prices go straight through it very quickly, making this area an area that was memory, and it went straight through it like a hot knife on butter makes it important. People like, huh, this area is valid for me. This becomes like a breakout kind of trade again for them. So these levels will do their best to hold. These levels will do their best to hold on the other side once support has broken down and it makes it resistance. Okay. All right. So let's, let's take a look at that now again with you. Guys. I want to just check back in with you. Yeah, does that answer your, your, your question? Some of you guys had a question on that. Is that good? Does that make sense? On um, You wanted more details on it, so you got the full spectrum. And uh, Lorenzo, you're saying people will remember a certain price are the people's, the big boys, because it's only the big boys who move the market. Yes, it is. It is. But even though it's the big boys who move the market, that panic, that panic actually holds, holds true because many people activate their trades based on the panic. If the market is dead, it's just going like this. No one trades. No one trades. How many of you guys traded Bitcoin when it was like this? How many people traded Bitcoin when it was like this? People only trade when they're not supposed to trade. <laughs> this, it's, it's the common, unfortunately, it's the common psychology of trading, right? Does that make sense? All right, so you want to keep track of all of these things piece by piece by piece. So as a quiz, as a quiz, I want you, I want to ask you guys, we'll go into more examples. I saw some of you, some of you asking for some more examples. You're going to get an example set as well, not to worry. We're going to do some charts together, some example sets. And if I can, I'll even throw in an extra example set on a live market. Okay, because you need to see this live as well. It's only so strong on a uh, historical market. I want to show you this live so you were like, okay, okay, it makes sense now. I got it. I got it. I'm going to use it now, right? So uh, you know, watch out for those. Uh, it, it'll show up in your emails. And, and if you're just watching the recording, you can head on over uh, by using the link in the description to pick it up on Urban Forex. Now, 
Um, so uh, as a quiz, one more time, one more time. What are the two elements of support and resistance? Not support and resistance. <laughs> what is the two elements? Why is support and resistance important? Why is it important? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's see who's listening. Let's see who took the right notes. Let's see who's serious. Okay. I see one right answer. Okay. Two, three. No, it's not, ex uh, okay, explosive moves. Okay, I, I, can, I can take that, that's pretty good. There you go, wall and memory. It is a wall that's gonna try to stop the market, but if it goes through very hard, it becomes memory, okay? These two things, hand in hand. Okay, when, how do we know it is going to be a real support and resistance apart from the blast? What else do we need to know? Okay, next piece of quiz. Apart from the blast, what else do we need to know? <laughs> so, some of you guys are saying Trump's wall memory. <laughs> like, okay. Strength, no. Momentum, emotion, uh, if it holds. There you go, some of you guys, there you go. Percentage of pullback. If it stops there, and if it just pulls back a little bit and then it blasts up north, that pullback is not enough to make a memory. So there is a little catch there. You can't have a little bitty pullback and then blast again like, maybe that's a support and resistance. No, it needs to pull back enough. So think of it like you're driving a car and you're going full speed at one direction. If there's a speed bump, you slow down and then you keep driving again. That speed bump makes no difference in your memory. But if you're driving full speed and a cop pulls you over and says, hey man, you're gonna stay here 30 minutes, I'm gonna check your license plate, I'm gonna give you a ticket, and then I'll let you go. That you will remember. You will remember that area. You're gonna be like, there's a cop at that freaking end of that intersection. That is the same thing in trading. When you get pulled over, how much, how long you get pulled over? What is the punishment of your pullover? You will remember. If it's a speed bump, no one cares. No one cares. Make sense? All right. Good, good, good. Okay, let's get, let's get back to the charts. Let's get back to the charts. Okay. All right, now take a look at these. This area, lots of times, no support and resistance in this area. But earlier, we can say, Huh, is this resistance? Yes, why? Because of that, okay. But when it comes to here, hey man, why isn't it holding? But people are hoping it will hold. Come on baby, go down again, give me that discount. Come on baby, go down again, give me that discount. It's not happening, it's not happening, come on. And then boom, really, really hard. What? No way. Once price comes back to that area, people remember, hey man, that price, you want to start buying again because they don't go down anymore. That's why support becomes resistance. That's why support becomes resistance or why resistance becomes support. You must know the why. Don't just draw a line. You must know the why. Okay? All right. All right, let's take a look at the next one, okay? Prices go up, this area responds hard, but then it goes up through it hard, and it's like, whoa, this looks like a good area, this looks like a good area. It retraced last time till here, but then it jumped up right back quickly, and when it was here, look at that little tail there. Maybe it's gonna go down again, maybe it's gonna go down again, and then it blasts out of it. Whoa, is it gonna hold in this area? Okay, is it gonna hold in this area? Yeah, okay. This area ends up holding, okay? It goes a little bit lower, but it ends up holding. Th this is called a hold, this still holds. This is not a through, because you're not putting your stop loss like you know one inch below it. This is not supply and demand, but it actually holds. It, it holds a reason to it, okay? So you wanna look, look at these areas. Now here's another one. That same area when it jumped up here, crashed down from there, 
and then hoping it's going to hold there. Look at that little tail there. But it didn't hold. It just flew right through. Well, that area holds. Okay, you want to draw that zone. That area holds. Doesn't come that far. People start buying as quickly as possible. Okay, same thing. Next one, aggressive, aggressive. The percentage of that. Okay, that area holds. That area holds. It goes up again. Okay, that area holds. But this time it doesn't go up higher, right? But it crashes through very, very hard. This area holds, area holds, okay? So you can't just use it anywhere and saying it's a, it's a level. You have to know why it should hold. What is the reason it should hold? Can I say this is a support right here? Okay, just because it touched it one time, it touched it two time, it touched it three time. You know, the typical education is the more times it touches, the better it is. Some people say the more times it touches, the weaker it becomes. I say, I don't give a rat's crap, but if it touches as many times as it matters, it doesn't matter. It can touch as many times as it wants. What did it do after the touch? That's what matters. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, guys. So let's, let's uh, take a quick look at any little final turn on the chat here. I hope that was very useful for you guys so you guys can see actually I really wanted to point out to you guys the true importance of support and resistance. This isn't something to take lightly. Uh, every time a student comes to me, I take them back to the basics. I'm like, you know what? You're trying to be pro, but the basics are all jumbled up. Let's fix the basics. Let's fix the basics. Okay. Uh, can uh, Abhishek, you're saying, can we consider supply and demand, uh, support and resistance as supply and demand? No, they're two different things. You cannot use it together. Uh, Leert, you're saying no bounce, no SNR. Fantastic. Very good. Very good. Uh, Samuel, you're saying, what's the difference between buyers and sellers and support and resistance? Um, they're two different things. They, they can't go, they can't go hand in hand together. Buyers and sellers are which party is playing the market. Support and resistance is, is the market going to hold? You know, that, that's a whole different thing. Okay. Uh, Nitin, you're saying which time frame for Indian market? You can use any time frame. It depends on your risk appetite and depends on how much the spreads and commissions are. So that is totally up to uh, the markets that you're dealing with. Marianne, you're saying isn't a breach whereby it holds halts is an SNR? Yes. For that particular question, yes, because a breach generally is strong, right? If the breach is strong, well, it becomes SNR, all right? That's why we call it seller's territory or buyer's territory, okay? This is MPA discussions now. <laughs> uh, Nathan Ellis are saying, uh, what is your view on robots in the market? That's, that's out of support and resistance. Uh, I love robots. Uh, I think robots will be great one day. I hope they can continue to, uh, you know, they can be built to clean my house. <laughs> but in terms of trading, only artificial intelligence. Manual programming, as of right now, for me personally, manual programming is useless. Only artificial intelligence can actually do good programming. Okay? All right. Uh, Eduardo, how long should we have memory on one support and resistance? Um, the stronger the memory, the better. I want you to think yourself, if you were buying that car, and if it goes up to 5,000 and it goes as a discount to 1,000, that's a strong memory. But if it goes up to 5,000 and it discounts $200, it's not strong. I want you to remember it like that. How much of a shock is it? Like, wow, that shock becomes the memory. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, uh, Abdul, you're saying breach by Mr. Cool is the strongest. Mr. Cool, I'm guessing uh, larger players or Iceman. Uh, Mohammed, you're saying Niven, do you use moving averages? Um, it's, it's Niven, but <laughs> Niven's fine. Uh, I, I don't use, uh, as, uh, I use moving averages just as a tool to understand the flow of the market. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for today. I want to really thank you guys for coming into here. Um, for those of you guys who are in the MPA, those of you guys who are in the MPA, we are restarting the MPA webinars. Okay, so the special announcement for those of you guys who are in the Mastering Price Action course, we are reactivating private webinars for the Mastering Price Action course. So look out for my emails. Once that comes in, you will be invited for this private webinar. We're going to look at the charts. 
We're going to look at all the information that you've learned from the MPA, and we're going to compare it to the charts and learn uh, a little bit more and go deeper. Okay, so I, I'm sure you guys would really, really like that. Okay, 4CB webinars are also going to continue. 4CB webinars are also going to continue. So it's going to be a powerful year ahead, and I look forward to seeing all of your progresses. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for coming. Until next time, cheers. Bye for now.